there is a new Trolls movie coming out called Trolls World Tour. And if you're anything like me, you're looking at those trolls and you're like, those aren't trolls. They're not, they're not trolls because the trolls that we grew up with look like, look like this, you know, or, or they look like, like this, or, or they look like this, right? These, these are the trolls that we grew up with. They're the trolls that we know and love. In fact, I loved trolls so much. I made this t-shirt. See that, that is a troll. <laughs> I mean, not that, that's a T-Rex. My point is, I love trolls. I mean, here's a collection of trolls that I have back in Australia. Here's a picture of a troll that I drew last week. And then I remembered when I was growing up, there were so many different types of trolls. And I always thought that I had like the original troll, you know, the proper legit troll. But I just remember there being so many brands. So I was like, who even owns trolls? So I set out to find out how this guy became this guy. And are the two related? To find out who owns the original troll, we have to go back to 1950. When a man called Thomas Dam carved a doll for his daughter in Denmark. Try saying that ten times fast. When Thomas Dam carved a doll for his daughter in Denmark. When Thomas Dam carved a doll for his daughter in Denmark. Then in 1957, Thomas Dam copyrighted his doll as the good luck troll over in Denmark. Then in 1959, trolls go gangbusters. They become really, really popular over in Denmark and the family ends up on the front cover of such famous magazines as Serg and Family Journal, Favnenfold af Lieke. I'm gonna get a hate mail. An indig, dig, an indig, little trolled. Oh, a little trolled. I'm so sorry. Then in 1961, <laughs> Thomas Dam sells 90 trolls to Scandia House Enterprises over in the States. Now, these trolls don't have a copyright on the foot yet because they're still fairly new, but he sells them anyway, and Scandia House, like, great, we're gonna start selling these in the US. <laughs> Thomas Dam, now operating as a company called Dam Things, which is a great name for a company, meets up with a company called You Need a Doll in 1964. And I think the meeting goes a little bit like this. Hello, I'm Dam Things. No need to swear, you need a doll. No, we have dolls. We know, we want to buy them from you. Ah, and you are? You need a doll. No, I already said that. Who's on first? Wah, 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 wah. Anyway, damn things licenses you need a doll to start selling trolls as Wishnik dolls. Of course, Scandia House hate this, and all of a sudden, damn things stop selling Scandia House their trolls. In fact, they start making their own trolls in the States and selling them as well. It's pretty cheeky. So Scandia House are like, we're taking you to court because you stopped supplying us with dolls and started selling them yours. Yeah, we also licensed someone else to sell them. Who? You need a doll. I know I do. That's why we're taking you to court. Wah, 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 wah. So basically what damn things does is they register for copyright with their trolls in the US and then they counter sue Scandia House by saying, well, you don't have the right to sell our dolls anyway because we own them. Then in 1965, <laughs> Damn Thing scores a spectacular own goal. Oh dear! Oh dear! I mean, it is a huge mistake counter suing Scandia House because essentially the judge says, you don't own the copyright to trolls because they tried to copyright them after they'd already been selling in the States without a copyright. That made them public domain. So in 1965, a judge says, there being no apparent difference and no evidence of any difference between dolls defendant deposited in the copyright office and dolls in the public domain, defendant cannot claim any copyright in the dolls deposited in the copyright office and the claims to copyright are invalid, void and of no effect. So what this means is that any company can start making troll dolls in the US because suddenly there's no copyright on them. They're public domain, so anyone can make one if they want one. So what happens? Everyone starts making trolls. In 1974, 
because everyone was making troll dolls, the original manufacturing company in the States that Damn Things owned, called Royalty Design, went bankrupt. And a very, very smart man called Russ Berry, who'd worked for a little company called Scandia House, swooped in and bought the original moulds for the trolls off of Royalty Designs. Russ Berry then starts making their own trolls from the original moulds. Now let's skip on to the 80s. It's a fun time. Cool people are being born. Between 1982 and 1991, Damn things have another shot at the US. They go through a company called EFS Inc. and they agree to start selling trolls as Norphans. Unfortunately, during this time in 1989, Thomas Dam passes away. The company essentially goes on to his family and they rebrand themselves as the Troll Company. Meanwhile, in 1988, Russ Berry started putting a copyright sign on the bottom of their trolls. You might remember this. In fact, um, a few of mine have got it as well. So I've got an example here. This is a Russ troll and he's got his little copyright on his foot there. In 1990 to 1991, Russ Berry's troll sales expand to $44 million. They're making very good money. So Russ Berry's like, I should probably apply for the copyright that I'm sticking on the feet of my trolls. So in 1991, EFS, who have been making and selling the damn things slash troll company trolls as Norphans in the States, takes Russ Berry to court to say, you can't do this. This is our copyright. These are our trolls. But Russ Berry are like, we've been making them since the 70s. In another spectacular own goal. Oh dear. Oh dear. By taking Russ Berry to court, the judge turns around and says, the plaintiff and defendants are enjoined from placing copyright marks on their lines of trolls. Essentially, the judge says, we've already talked about this. No one can put copyright on trolls. They're in the public domain. No one owns them. So of course, all the copycat companies are like, Yay! Then in late 1994, Congress comes down from heaven, hallelujah, with the Uruguay, 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 the Uruguay, with the Uruguay, Uruguay, with the Uruguay Round Agreements Act. That in conjunction with another law that was passed essentially means that all copyrights in certain countries are now recognized in the States. <laughs> So you can go back and claim something that wasn't claimed earlier. It takes a little bit, but in early 1996, the original copyright for Good Luck Trolls is finally recognized in the States. Pretty much immediately, the court reverses its decision that was banning all the companies from putting copyright on the dolls. Because now we know that the copyright belongs to damn things. Slash troll company. Then, because of all the paperwork and everything, it isn't until 2000 that the troll company get the actual certificate of registration for the copyright in the States and they can start enforcing it. In 2001, troll company are at a toy fair in Germany and they run into a bit of an old spark. Stop, you need a long time no see. <sighs> what do you want, damn things? Actually, it's just troll company now. Anyway, just wanted to let you know that we own the copyright to trolls now, so you better not start selling those Wishnik dolls again. Nobody wants your creepy dolls, Steve. <laughs> then in August 2001, <laughs> Troll Company takes Russ Berry to court one final time for a massive showdown, because they're like, we've got the copyright now, you're not allowed to put them on your trolls anymore. And Russ Berry are like, oh, 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 it hurts, it hurts. And they KO them. Hey, oh! with their restored original copyright ownership. In 2003, a company that I remember from my childhood, and you probably do too, because their name was hilarious, Deek. gets in touch with Troll Company and starts to woo them. I want to make your troll babies. What's in it for me? I'm super rich, and we'll give them a TV series and a cutting edge website. Oh, and we're going to put a Z on the end of their name, so it's pronounced Trolls, so everyone knows it's ours. Sold! Meanwhile, in 2003, at another toy fair in Germany, Troll Company runs into their old flame again. Oh, hello, you need a doll. What is it this time? Oh, nothing. Just wanted you to know that I've started seeing a super hot company called Dick. Dick! She's really into me, honestly. Dick is all over me. But she's kind of the jealous type, so... 
She just wants to make sure that no one else is gonna have my trial babies. Nobody wants your creepy dolls, Steve. Later in 2005, troll company are back at the German toy fair and they run into their flame a third time who has some news for them. You need her? What's this I hear about you being pregnant? That's right, Steve. This Christmas, I'm expecting a brand new range of wishnicks. You told me you didn't want my creepy dolls. I lied. <laughs> I'll see you in court. I bloody love court. November 2005. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. That's right. Troll company, I'm back in court. This time with you need a doll. You infringed our copyright. You don't own the copyright. And even if you did, then that makes us a reliance party. Uh, and we still have a year to sell our stock. Sidebar. What's a reliance company? Okay, so if you're selling something, in this instance, trolls, and it's in the public domain, and that's how you make your living, and you don't know necessarily if someone has claimed the copyright back to that, it means that the company that claims the copyright has to give you written notice to say, we've got the copyright now, you're not allowed to keep selling these. And then you've got a year to sell all of your stock and start selling something else. Got it? Got it. But then the judge is like, yeah, nah, troll company does have the copyright and you stopped selling wishnicks like 10 years ago. See, that's the thing. To be a reliance company, you have to keep selling the stock because that's how you rely on it. But if you stop selling the stock for like 10 years and then after that you're like, oh, suddenly going to start selling it again. You can't claim reliance party. Ah, oh, bum. In August 2007, <laughs> troll company and Dick have an awkward meeting. I think we should break up. What? Why? Uh, maybe because you lied about being rich and our troll baby is a huge disappointment? Don't even get me started on the cutting edge website. What's wrong with the cutting edge website? This is what's wrong with the cutting edge website. So Deke are like, oh baby, give me time, I'll do better. But they were lying because what they actually did is they went to court first with troll company knowing that being the first ones to sue, they would look least guilty. Tricked ya! I'm suing you! Yeah, well, I'm suing you! Damn! Dick! Worth it. Worth it for that joke alone. Then the troll company just goes a little bit court crazy, starts taking everyone to court. Like, in 2008, they took Urban Outfitters to court for this. Hey kid, what is this? Is this a troll? We call them turf trolls, sir. What am I, an idiot? Do I look like an idiot to you? No, sir. I'm taking you to court. I bloody love court. I'll settle! What was that? I said I'll settle, sir. After an incredibly long and stressful journey, Troll Company agrees to meet with another company in 2013. And that company is DreamWorks. <laughs> okay, I'll sell you the Troll IP. But you must know that it comes with a curse. The only way to break the curse is to summon the power of a child star turned boy band singer turned solo artist. But where are you going to find one of them, right? Don't be so quick to the rest is history. I mean, it didn't do that well. It wasn't that popular. I mean, who even heard of it? And that's the story of the original troll. The original troll. The original trolls. And the original troll. All owned legally by the same company. They are the ones who actually own trolls. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. This talk was originally written for a comedy night called An Evening of Unnecessary Detail. It's run by the Festival of the Spoken Nerd. Unfortunately, they've had to postpone all of their shows, as have I, and I didn't want the talk to go to waste, which is why I recorded it and put it up here. If you liked it, please let me know. Subscribe, comment below, like, share it with your friends. And if you really, really liked it and have the means, you can buy me a uh, equivalent of a drink at coffee, which is uh, ko-fi.com forward slash Beck Hill. That's coffee.com forward slash Beck Hill. That'll help me pay to get these videos edited if you want more. Uh, or, you know, just for food would be nice. Um, it definitely won't go to a troll collection. It won't. I can't. I can't eat them. And I have enough already. I want to give a massive thanks and shout out to Matt Hyten, who's an incredible comedian as well. Make sure you go and subscribe to his channel because his editing, writing, performing, everything is fantastic. So give him a, a, give him a little, little clicky, little click, click, click. Thanks again. Have a wonderful, I've said thanks so many times, but I mean it. I mean it. I'm so, so happy. Okay. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Troll.